Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. A little bit different view here. I really wanted to capture something on video so I could uh, show this to you because I, I think it's neat. Unfortunately, I know some of you are going to complain about the video quality. I totally get it because what I want you to see here is the flow numbers and this part at the same time. The problem is these flow numbers are in red, so they don't capture well on the camera. I have my monitors that are huge and great to see, but awesome for camera, but I can't get this and the cylinder head in the same shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'll have it this way. Hopefully I can catch this phenomenon, but what I want to do is I'm just gonna flow it like I would normally. You're gonna see the flow numbers come up here and I'm gonna um, take recordings and it's recording on the computer currently as we're doing this, but it'll go to 28 inches of vacuum and I'll take a recording. So it's, right now it's at a 10th of an inch valve lift and I'm gonna go, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and a one inch valve lift. Stopping it every time to do that. Now, this head is an AFR, 227, small block Chevy, competition ported head. This is going on my 406 dyno mule that I'm gonna dyno test on Thursday, which depending on when you're watching this, the, the test might have already been happened. But anyway, the point with this one is there's something weird that happens when AFR heads that nobody else's heads happen, and I'm really hoping I capture this. There's something else I want to test that has to do with these entries that I'll show you in just a minute. So hopefully you could see this, and I hope it turns out well. It's probably going to be a little bit loud, but you're going to see what it's like to flow ahead. In case you're wondering, there are two head bolts that are holding this onto this fixture. If you see someone using clamps, they ain't got the right stuff. You need the plate, and it needs to be bolted on. No clamps, because that plate has dowel pins that locate this, exactly as his head would be if it was sitting on the actual engine. Not just, I guess it looks centered and use my lines and stuff. This is exactly how it should be. There is a head gasket that's in here. You can kind of see it right here. And there's a spark plug in there. Now that's a projected tip spark plug. Non-projected tip spark plugs typically flow a little bit better on most cylinder heads, but the dyno has projected tip spark plugs. So that's what I like to run. So anyway, let's flow this. And I hope I can show you this because after I'm done flowing, I, you can see what I did. But pay attention to that. Right about, I'm going to say, I'm going to do something about 600 or 700 valve lift if things go right. If not, you just got to see me flow ahead and then we'll test some things with this. I'm not stopping the video. I'm just turning on the flow bench. Well, it didn't do it. And as you can tell, it flowed 325. 
the reason why I wanted to show you that was this. Um, there are times when I'm flowing these AFR heads. It's only on AFRs. I'll put my radius plate on exactly set up like this. And when you get to six, it's like 323, which I'm like, man, that's insane because my Ported Dragon Slayers do that. But I'm like, 227, no way. And all I will do, and so anyway, I'll go up to 700 to flow 342. I'm like, no way, that's insane. All I'll do is tap like that, drops to 325. And no matter how much you open it, or you can go back to six, it won't go 322. It, it won't. AFR is the only heads I know that when you stop that airflow and you make it restart, it doesn't go back to what it was. So in other words, if you slowly open the valve, that air stays attached to the short side and it looks really, really good on the flow bench. But the minute you stop it, it flows what it did here. So as you can tell, like when I did it, it was 324 before, it went 324 after. It just really, really depends. Several of them, I'll put that on and it will do that weird thing. So um, unfortunately, you didn't get to capture on camera because of course, the one time I decide to record that, it doesn't show up. But what we are going to test is these entry plates. This is actually a 1207 entry plate. Let me see if I can move my camera a little bit here. This is a 1207 entry plate, which is actually bigger than the entry for the AFR head. These are 1206, but they've got radius. That's why they say don't board match them to a 1206. Your intake, because they've got more corner radius. But what I reason why I use this 1207 is because I put modeling plate, as you can obviously tell, to fill in the corners and it works out better. But one of the things we want to test is what happens if I put a smaller entry on and uh, see what it does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to raise it up and see if it's too high or too low. Because for those that have been watching my channel, you've been like, well, that's cool and all. But when you did the dyno test and that intake manifold made a better difference because it was sitting the way it should be on here directly like this and not up. Um, that's why it made more power. But have you ever done it on a flow bench? And honestly, I haven't. I usually try to get these as lined as possible. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to grab a 1206 entry plate, and it's actually smaller because I use it on a smaller head. And I'm going to flow it again using that plate. So this would simulate having an intake manifold that's got a really a smaller opening than the cylinder heads, and we'll see what it'll do. Hopefully, I can get it to recreate that in the same event. But I'm going to stop the video real quick so that I can switch this over to a 1206 with some clay in it, and we'll recreate this test again, and we'll see what will happen. And then what I'll do is, um, after doing that one, I think what I'll do is I'll take that 1206 and I'll maybe move it, I'll take the clay out and flow it again, and then maybe I'll move it up, and maybe I'll move it down. We'll see what it does with the flow on that. So here we go, give me a second, I'm gonna reset this. Okay, I have it reset up, and what I've done here is, this is a 1206 plate, obviously, but I, this is, last time I used this plate, I was using it on something, it was a 1205 entry. So actually the clay is actually smaller than a 1205. So you could think of this to simulate if you had a 1205 entry um, intake manifold. In other words, your regular Victor Juniors, they come that way. So your Performer RPMs, they come that way too. And you bolted on something that was 1206, what would it do for flow? So we're just going to see. Now, for the sake of time, just letting you know, right now it's at 400 valve lift. So I'm going to go 400, 500, 600, 700, all the way up. You're like, why don't you capture the low ones? Because it won't have as much of an impact. And I want to see an impact. And also, I don't want to waste time. If you're asking, why is the wrench there? Uh, what a lot of people do, they kind of cheat up their flow numbers, just for the inside track. These are check springs. You don't use regular springs because this has to open against it. But what they do is they'll use a really light spring on this exhaust side, and they'll flow the intake side. And what happens is um, the lighter spring won't hold the valve open. So what it does is that as the bench, as the bench is sucking air, it actually pulls the exhaust valve open and you get an airflow from the exhaust side in there too. And it jacks their flow numbers up. And that's, that's what we call cheating. So I, to prevent that, I actually put a wrench underneath here so it's got a lot of tension. I mean, you can 28 inches I think is about a pound. There, you ain't moving that. So that's why that's there. But anyway, I'm going to kick it on. Remember at 400, we'll go four, five, six. You get the idea. Watch for the flow numbers. If it does that weird thing, I'll show you again. So, hope oh, maybe it will.
Okay, as you can see, it, it. I mean, if you could see the flow numbers, which I know it's really hard. Sorry. Uh, yeah, they sucked. It, it, it hurt it a lot. So, anyway, that's lesson learned there, right? So what I'm going to do is remove all this clay, and we'll go right to a 1206, and I'll make it as close as I can to get to this entry, and I'm going to reflow. So let me set up again. I'm going to remove all this, get it close, and we'll try again. Okay, let me show you what I did to it. As you can tell, I had to add some down here because even though this is 1206, I forgot I multiple uh, modified my plate a little bit a long time ago. It's only slightly larger, but it was just enough of an edge that I didn't feel it'd be fair. So I did put some of modern clay here and up in this corner. So it's it's not as big as, like the 1207 was actually perfect. This one's actually still smaller in this corner here, but I did make it match this side. So this side's matched and this one isn't. You're like, well, that's not fair. Don't get me wrong here in a second. I'm gonna take all that out and we'll see uh, what happens. Cause then it's like having the manifold sit too low and then we'll raise it all the way up and see what happens if the manifold was sitting too high. So anyway, let me move my camera back here. See if we can't zoom in on these numbers maybe a little bit better. Now again, nope, that didn't work worth a damn. There we go. Again, let me turn my camera just a bit because I bet you this gets it. We're at 400, so it's going to go 4, 5, 6, 7, keep going up. I think last time I stopped at 9 because what happened, it didn't quite make it to 9. The retainer hits the um, seal. So, but anyway... Here we go, so it's starting at four. So every time you see me pause and turn it, I'm going 100, so do your math. But anyway, here we go. That one actually did better than the 1207. Um, and the, I think because of the 1207, I had more epoxy, or not epoxy, more modeling clay here on the side because the 1207 is obviously wider too. So uh, anyway, this one actually was the best look at those numbers. And I'll show you those other numbers in a minute. I tried doing the little pop thing to see if it would recover, which it did. Um, I should have known because it was looking good, but it, I was like, maybe if it goes 330s, I know, boom, and it's not going to go 330s. All right, now I'm gonna take this off and raise it up and I'll show you. So let me stop it and reset again. Okay, let me show you what's happened. Now you can see, I gotta get rid of that monoclase, clay. It's gonna be sucked in. I think it'll be fine. Now you can see the step at the bottom here. I'm trying not to mess up my camera. See how the clay is, or not the clay, but the step is. There's definitely a step. Hopefully you can see it. I'll we'll just touch the camera there. See it? The monoclase clay is like kind of at the bottom of it. That's probably a hundred. It's it's in other words, I match it at the top and left the bottom where it's got a step. This would be like if your manifold sits too far down. So you're looking down your single plane manifold and you see, hey, I can see the floor. I mean, there's a step in the floor. Oh wait, yeah, you can see it better there. 
This would that be a simulation. So as soon as we do this, I'm going to raise it up and do it the other way, where the floor lines up, but the roof's not. So this is roof's fine, bottom not. So I'm going to move it here again. Hopefully, get the camera. By the way, this is on the tripod, so I'm trying all this. So it looks weird whenever I'm doing this stuff, but uh, you know, technology got to advance. Nope, that didn't work. There we go. All right, let me kick it on. Here we go. Remember, it's at four, five, and going up. tell you in case you can't see it don't worry i'm gonna show you all the raw numbers when i'm done uh this was almost as good as the best and that's with that step kind of goes against everything you're thinking because the air is like wow right well that's why we test so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make the floor match but the roof's gonna be high i wonder what that'll do right so let me just get that set up okay now i've got it set up you can see definitely there's a step at the roof but the floor is perfect i did add modeling clay to make the radius right on the floor just like I did for when I did on the roof. But, yep, there you go. There's your step. Let's see what it does. I'm going to raise this back up. Go. All right, kick on the old bitch. Remember, it's four, five, and up. it looking at the numbers which i'll show you in just a second this was only slightly better than whenever it was made to a 1205 now if you remember the 1205 was actually probably it was this way but smaller here and smaller here oddly enough it was worse than this but not by much this is really bad but anyway let me stop the camera and i'll show you the actual numbers so you can see the difference 
Okay, here are the numbers. Now, as if you're watching and you were able to zoom in on the screen and you could get to where you could see it, you'll notice that some of those numbers looked really, really high compared to what you've seen on the sheets. And that's because when I, you wouldn't know this, but the reason why I pause in between is because I'm pressing F1 for record on the, I'm pressing record on the keyboard. But what it does is it takes 15 readings and then it averages those readings and those average of the 15 are here. So you might've saw like a 328, you might've saw a 323 on some of them. But that might have been like the high point while we're recording, and there might have been like a 319 in the sim in the middle. So the average it, it gets more accurate. Is what I'm trying to say, um, the more readings you take, the better it is. 15 readings, and that's over that time. That's pretty good. So it's able to repeat. In other words, if I did the same test again, I would get the numbers within three tenths of one cfm. So pretty close. Here we go. Here's our results. You know, just take a peek here. So this is our baseline right here. And this is uh, 1207, got my clay to match. This is what it should flow, you know, not, not what they claim. This is what it flows, 323, and it actually did a 900 lift, but it only does 301 at six. So I'm starting to wonder if it actually is going to beat the heads that are on the 406 now. I hope so, because I want to see it make more power, even though the ones that are on there now are my design, but you want more power. But anyway, that's 1207 to match. And so that one's probably about the best we're going to get, except for until you get to this one. This one's actually closer, but we'll get to that. The next one we did was the 1205. So we just did four, five, and, you know, four, five, six up. So we went from a 255 to a 251. What a loss. You lost 12 CFM at 500. At 600, wow, 11. And then another about 11. And quite a bit more, 16 and almost 21 using a 1205. It only made 305. Ugh. Now, this is our next best one. This is a 1206 and it's matched. In other words, that's where I filled in the clay at the bottom. You look at it, 256. That's actually better than our baseline. 291, also better than the baseline. So this is probably the better way to flow it. And then we look 306 at, at six, so that's better too. 316 versus 313. 322 versus 321. And 326 versus 323. That one right there is probably the closest to matching, and that's the reason why I probably did so well. So even though I thought this was better, the 1207 having that, because it's wider and I had to put more modding clay to get radius on the outside, having this one was probably the better choice. And then we get into the interesting ones. This is where the 1206 is too low. In other words, the top fits perfectly. We're lining up the top of the port, the bottom's got a gap like a 100 dial, right? Look what it does. So we'll compare it to these two, because that's, that's right now our best one anyway. 256 to a 253, I only lost three. At five, 291 to 290, it only lost one. 306 or 305.5 to 305.4, it is virtually identical. 316.3 to 316-ish, I mean 315 rounded up, that's almost identical. 326 to three, it actually did better at eight. And then at nine, 326 to a 324, it was down two. Point being is, if you look at this, and that gap's obvious. There's, you saw it on camera. That's a big gap. It's not a small gap. That's a big gap. Turns out you can have that gap at the bottom, and it really don't affect flow that much. But having the gap at the top, though, look at this. We're going to compare this one again. That's our baseline now. To this. 256 to 247, you lost a ton. 291 to 277, yep, you lost again. 306 to 291, that sucks. And then 316 to a 301. Oh, ouch. 323 to a 305. Ooh, 325 or 326 to a 305. Almost lost 20 CFM by having the intake too high. In other words, you could see the top of the port like that. There you go. That is the killer. Now, this, some of you might say, wait a minute. You know, I've heard, I actually did this dyno test because I'd heard it too. I heard that if you put a big block rectangular port intake manifold on an oval port uh, big block head, it will make more power. And essentially, you'd have a situation that looks just like this. Let me just do boop. You would have an identical situation. Well, guess what? If you go back and watch when I dyno tested the 496, we did that. We had an oval port, so the oval was down here, and you had all this probably like half an inch above it. The thing lost like 40 horse. So that's a myth. This is the wrong way. The worst way to have it is a gap at the top from the, what the flow bench says. And trust me, after dynoing with that big block, it is confirmed. Anyway, 
Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.